To summarize the use of both the footprints and the dust compounds in one scene, we're going to illustrate by putting together our scene from scratch. The first thing you're going to do is bring in the environment model from the models folder of the training project. Just switch into our project models folder, drag that cleaned environment modeled in. should look very familiar to you from the first ICE tutorial series where we were dealing with applying high frequency detail to the set through the use of trees, shrubs, etc. Uh, and reused, of course, from the XSI 6 training material. We're going to need to prep this scene up a little bit to make it work. If I open an Explorer and have a look at the uh, pathway, we don't have a lot of detail here with which to work for a footprints effect. We'll actually have the character either moving down this straight away here where there seems to be kind of a lot of area for dust to be kicked up. So we'll make the geo group live first of all. I'll just make sure its selectability is having no effect on the members of the group. And the first thing I'll do to kind of clean up these tries is just run a quadrangulate. Uh, I'll look under modify poly mesh and run quadrangulate. So right away that gets rid of 96% of my uh, tries. There's still a few triangles left here, and again, you can filter them out based on, on angles if you wish. And you can even go and manually delete some edges as well. This is really just going to help you clean up your uh, clean up your poly flow a little bit when we go and subdivide it. So this being the only one left, again, the poly shifts the UV coordinate just a little bit. That's fine. Everything still looks okay. It doesn't look stretched at all. Uh, then what I'm going to do is run a polygon subdivision. So if I say polygon mesh, subdivide polygons, just set that iterations a number of times till we get the, the kind of level of detail that we need. So that's starting to look pretty good. We can get a sense of how many polygons we're dealing with here by opening an explorer. Um, sorry, uh, Visibility Options Property page, Shift-S, and Running Statistics. We'll look up Selection Info. And so we have uh, qu quite a number of polygons here. Again, I'm not going to really need the polygons in, say, this stretch of area. So to get rid of that and localize the effect, I could again just undo this and maybe do an Extract Polygons and only add polygons along this row where uh, the effect will be used. Again, you kind of have to be efficient when you're dealing with scene setup. So we'll do that. Again, I keep on going outside of the sphere here. Uh, one of the things you can do is use a backface culling if I just switch to my display options and look under performance, turn on backface culling and you deal with kind of like a little diorama effect. Uh, I'll grab these polygons right here and I'll just use the grow polygons shift equals tool to go up right to this corner of the road and I'll use a poly mesh extract and delete. So I end up with two separate strips. Uh, I could also refine this a little more in the sense that the seabed does really no good being a part of my polygon selection as it's never going to be seen. So again I'll just use this small stretch here. Uh, say from here onwards. Again I'll extract polygons and delete and make sure that we still have our textures which are usually always pulled across for us. Alright at this point I'm going to run a polygon mesh subdivision let's see how much better we do. So let's run the subdivide again. Let's activate our selection info options. So we have 264 to work with at one iteration. And at four iterations the nice thing is is we get a lot of nicely packed detail but we're only dealing with 16,000 polys. If I increase the iterations again, we'll be about 84,000. Or 87, or 67 in this case. Um, that might be a little much. Let me have a look. If I go back to 4, and again, ICE is going to allow us to, uh, to work with a, a resolution of varying topology. So I'll go with this for now. I'll keep the operator live just, just to see how, see how we go. I'll next bring in the Malkor character. So in the Exercise 7 Training Project Models, uh, drag in the Melkor Advanced Rig. And then let's pull some animation onto the Melkor character. 
there is a progressive walk cycle in the actions folder of the same training project. We'll drag in the 32 frame cycle and drag it on to Mulcor. So we get the character walking forward like that over a hundred frames. If we need to reorient the character, we could layer in a null to this entire uh, into this entire hierarchy here. So if I grab myself a null, maybe match position to the move all control, and then make the move all control a child of that. Move that back into the model. So I still get the progressive motion, but now I have an offset. that I can work with. I'll just visually change that into a, a pyramid, my little favored starting icon. And we'll start the character walking down the street. Now it really doesn't matter what direction. Out of town, in town, well let's sort of determine that right now I guess. Let's have Mulkor walking into town. Maybe she's just caught a, a nice fish down by the river. Okay, of course we're still missing some of our buildings here, but again, uh, working in a referenced sort of environment, this is how we could be mocking in a lot of our animation while other parts of production uh, are finished. Alright, so this, this should work well enough for us. We do have, I believe, 300 frames to work with. So I could keep the character walking all the way into town, right to this corner here. So it'll be interesting, I'll be able to scout out locations from which to, uh, to capture this shot. All right, so we've got the scene prepped. Uh, I'll just make one sure, make sure of one more thing that the character's feet are actually interacting with the ground when Malkor takes a step, and it doesn't look like that is the case. So if I just kind of look up, well, well back culling's on, so I won't see this, but I'll just try and pull the grid up just a hair. I'll use the Shift Page Up tool as my nudge. I'll just keep moving it till I see the grid intersect with Malkor's foot. So it really has to come up quite a bit. Control K here, it might be a little bit larger than I think. There we go. We'll say something like that. So we actually get the penetration of the foot, that might be a little bit much. And the problem here is that we also need to bring the ground up as well. So plus point seven oh two. Okay, and I just knew that because I moved the grid point seven oh two off zero. All right. That being done, we can move on to the next piece of business, which is applying these compounds to the scene.